Okay, four tips for great marketing would be one, a powerful theme. I don't see themes, I see offers. And how do we establish through the Bill Gates thing? People buy emotionally, not logically. So if you've got seven day pass as your heading, that is not emotional tag. You need a theme. An, an interesting headline, a strong offer, an inspirational picture. And I'll go through these separately. So the first one is theme, weight loss, stronger women, more confidence, birthday celebrations. There's nothing wrong with celebrating your club's birthday, as long as you don't do junk food. <laughs> you know, just give them all an apple with a bow around it or something, or there's, there's something you can do. If you have cakes and stuff in your celebrations, I think people get narky because they think, you know, you, you, you're meant to be teaching me better than this. You can just be a bit creative with it. And you can build a cake out of apples or something. I'm sure there's somebody that can do something for you. New Year celebrations. Ladies' Day Out was a great one I did. You know, again, target market. Ladies' Day Out started off with something like, you know, you can do a um, free combat class. And, oh, and it'll be free body balance. You know, it could be lunch afterwards. A hairdresser comes in and talks about colours for this season. A beautician comes in and talks about looking after your skin for this season. And then ends with some, you know, a glass of champagne, whatever. Ladies' Day Out, great. Back to school, it's time for you and energy. You know, any of those themes, you can just theme it up. Wellness. Right, Fiona? <laughs> you can theme it, okay? But weight loss would be my pick every time, and then you can mix it up. And you can have an open day or a health day for your members. You call it a member appreciation day, where you're doing something for your existing members, not an open day. It's a member appreciation day, and you can do a wellness health expo for the members. They bring a friend, and you do it internally, and that you do it that way, not so much the public coming in. Headlines. Okay, so the next strong thing was headlines that we needed. So start your own weight loss journey. You should be using that through the biggest loser through from January to April when the finale is. You need to be having weight loss promotions through the biggest loser. It is the best thing that happened publicly to our industry to get the word out. And it's a great laugh as well. <laughs> Start looking and feeling the way you want. Great one too. Drop a dress size. I love that because it doesn't matter what size you are, you want to drop a dress size. You know, you could be size 10 and you still want to drop a dress size. It's just simple and it seems easy. It's called shrinking the change where you make something easy. If I said there was somebody that was a size 20, can you just drop one dress size for me? She'd say absolutely. I said, if you want, can you get to your goal of size 10 from size 20? It would seem like it's like climbing Mount Everest, okay? It's called shrinking the change. People would believe it. Maximum results the quickest time. I think that might even be yours, Rowena, from training the 30-minute sessions all that time ago. Are you sick of not fitting into your clothes? Just ask them a question. Because that's what they say. They're sick of not fitting into my clothes. I want to wear what you want to wear. It's the first time, if you listen to Biggest Loser people, the first thing they did, I think Phoebe last series, she was 19 years old, and they said, what are you going to do, Phoebe, since you've lost this initial weight? She said, buy a mirror. She didn't even have a mirror. You know, they don't even have clothes they want to wear. Imagine how frustrating would that be that you can't go and say, oh, I like that pink dress, I want to wear it. It's like I've got that choice of that or that, which is the best out of a bad pick. You know, that, that's, that's not freedom, is it? Want to feel guilt-free while dining out? Put your hand up if you want to feel guilt-free dining out. Put your hand up. Drinking? <laughs> Obviously not the eaters in the room, they're drinking. <laughs> Okay, so those headlines, you know, questions, it can be mixed up between questions, but they've all got some sort of emotional tag. If you don't have an emotional tag on your marketing piece, it doesn't matter what it is, it's not going to be as strong as an offer. Because remember, people buy emotionally, they justify logically. The logical thing has to come. I'll give you a bit of an example. I smashed, my windscreen got a hole, a, a, a stone in it. And I, you know when you see on those ads, it goes right across the windscreen and you think, yeah, right, they're just... I never thought it happened. And I think I was going to see Simone. And I, then I went back to see her the next couple of days, and it literally went across the whole windscreen three quarters. And I thought, excuse my ignorance, boys, don't laugh at me, but I thought, is that going to fall in on me when I'm driving along the highway? Even though apparently it can't. And um, yeah, so I was panicking. Imagine at that point if windscreen O'Brien's rings me and says one night, hey, look, we've got a rep in the area. We'd like to come out and check for any cracks or anything in, in your windscreens. Would you like me to send a rep out? I would have said absolutely. If they said it's $1,500 for your windscreen, because I was so scared of driving out there the next day with Lily in the car, who's four, you know, driving her to kindy, I was worried, you know, protective mother. I would have said, I wouldn't care what it would pay. I would have found the money, borrowed it, 
stolen it, <laughs> lost it, whatever. I would have found the money to buy it because it was urgent, right? Now, if they said to me, oh, by the way, we've got a 20% off deal today. Anything you buy will be 20% off for any of our services. That would have just sweetened the deal. I would have felt like I got a bargain then, but it wouldn't have changed the outcome of my purchase because I needed the product. So your deals will never be the deciding factor in someone joining. It'll just make it sweeter for them. If they need the product, they need the product. So don't focus on the deals. Focus on their goals. Sell them the product and what we our services, and then just make it a sweeter deal for them by giving them a bonus at the end, whatever it is, free sessions, free 50% off joining fee, whatever. But if you focus on that thing, the, the deal at the end, like if the guy rang me in from Windscreen O'Brien's and focused on, oh, but we got 20% off, blah, 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 rather than actually saying if I've got a need, it, wouldn't have, it would have felt like a high-pressured sales environment. 